That's an awfully hot coffee pot. Should I drop it on Donald Trump? Probably not. Let's get this stuff out of the way first. I'm not making this video to say that all white people that rap are bad. I'm obviously not saying that all white rappers are good. I just think this is a very interesting, complicated topic, and I wanted to try to give my perspective on it. I'm a white guy. Hip hop has been by far my favorite genre for as long as I can remember. I try to make all my videos fairly without compromising my opinions while doing my proper research, and this video is going to be no different. I've been thinking a lot about this concept of white people in a rap for the past week or so, and it's for two main reasons. One, Eminem recently dropped a surprise album, and it soon became the highest rated rap album of all time by users on Metacritic, and two, I was scrolling down Twitter, I watched the music video for Jack Harlow's new song What's Poppin', and I thought it was pretty cool. These two things may seem unimportant, but I think they both represent some of the main ideas that we'll be discussing today. So without further ado, let's begin. I've listened to Jack Harlow before, I've seen some of the buzz surrounding him, I got plenty of recommendations to check out his 2019 album Confetti, however, I was never too interested in his stuff. But when his new song and music video appeared on my timeline, I started doing these weird mental gymnastics to try and justify why I was enjoying it. Maybe I didn't like Jack, maybe I saw the Lyrical Lemonade logo and it reminded me of better songs. Or maybe I didn't like Jack, I heard a fun beat and wasn't paying attention to anything else, but no, neither of those were the case. I liked Jack, and I liked the song. He's charming, he had some funny lines mixed in with a couple of bars that have some meaning behind them too, his flows were solid, and he was doing a nice job riding the line between goofy and serious that seems to be growing more and more popular lately. So then, once I accepted that I liked What's Poppin', I got annoyed with the fact that a second ago I was actively trying to find a reason to dislike this guy, and it's purely because he's white and he's rapping. But is that so wrong of me to do? First and foremost, rap has been a predominantly black space for its entire history. It's a genre that was built from telling their stories, their struggles, their successes. So these few decades later, sure, it's much more normal for white people to rap now more than ever, but I think we're still in a transition period, where it's perfectly common for fans to question a white rapper's legitimacy. In my head, as a white guy, I'm fully aware of how corny and or problematic so many white rappers can be, so over time I've generally trusted my better judgment, and I just haven't bothered with them. For anyone around my age, I think we really grew up at a time where being a white rapper was starting to become more of a genre than a coincidence. And here's what I mean by that. When you look at somebody like LP, this is a guy that has been in the game forever. He's been rapping for decades, he came from the underground and worked his way up. It took him years to find acceptance in the rap community, but he kept working and his story is inspiring and influential. He's a rapper that happens to be white. He's somebody that lives for hip hop culture and the color of his skin has practically nothing to do with the style and content of his music. He's He's not a white rapper, he's a white guy that raps. But when I was in middle school and high school, there were plenty of white rappers that were coming up, and being white certainly played a role in their music and their success. They weren't trying to be accepted into the hip hop community, they were perfectly happy picking and choosing, appropriating the styles and sounds from black artists without ever really being a part of rap culture. They were these privileged kids who practically claimed an entire genre for themselves like they were Christopher Columbus discovering America. They didn't care about the roots of the music that they were playing, they took the sound and made it about themselves. That's how we got these frat boy rappers like Sammy Adams, Chris Webby, and Mike Studd. Guys that weren't making rap music because they love rap music, but guys that were following a trend and taking advantage of an opportunity. Mike Studd is a former All-American baseball player that went to Duke. After an injury made him doubt his future as a professional ball player, he decided to be a rapper instead. Throughout his career, he pretty much went from frat boy rapper to a super boring, super uninteresting rap slash R&B guy. This is a man whose music, in my opinion at least, has has no redeemable value whatsoever, yet he's been relatively successful and he even has his own reality show on the Esquire network called This Is Mike Stud. It's him touring, fawning over hot girls, drinking a lot, and so on. 
pretty much what you'd expect. So when I see somebody like Jack Harlow, a white guy who is rapping, I take a second to scope him out because of guys like Mike Studd. I have no problem with white guys that rap, but I do have a problem with white rappers. And besides not having any authenticity, one of the reasons why is because white rappers don't acknowledge or probably even comprehend the insane privilege that they have. There's a reason why the frat rap rappers that I mentioned before had some decent success, and it's for one simple reason. White people love supporting white rappers. There is no denying this whatsoever, and hey, angry commenter, there's a solid chance that your favorite white people in rap have admitted this. One of the most interesting cases for white people in rap was that of Mac Miller. You're not gonna hear me say a single negative thing about adult grown-up Mac. I loved him, and I cry watching his tiny desk like once a month, but Young on the Rise Mac definitely leaned into white rap as a genre, and he eventually realized how messed up that concept is later in life. In a 2015 article for The Fader, Mac and Vince Staples had a conversation about white people in rap. As soon as they started talking, they both agreed that white people support white rappers in a very obvious, dramatic way. Then Mac said that a similar thing happens when a white guy is on an NBA team, and that is an incredible point. Vince eventually makes the distinction between white people that rap and white rappers, which we discussed before, and then Mac makes the big point that I'm trying to get across right now. It's funny because when Blue Slide Park happened, there was a surge of all these kids and we were able to sell 10,000 units on iTunes just out of nowhere. I remember touring and doing shows, and I was the first rap show ever in all these colleges. 6,000 kids and I'm the first hip-hop show because I'm white college friendly. That was always a demon for me. It was hard to sit here and know that because I was a white dude, I was able to sell easier and be more marketable. That wasn't tight to me. I wanted to go through the same sh that everyone else did. So whether it's Mac Miller or any of the frat boy rappers that I named before, they had an advantage early on because of the color of their skin. The other day I saw that Eminem dropped an album and most of the reactions that I saw weren't very positive at all, but lo and behold, next thing I know, it's the highest rated rap album of all time by users on Metacritic. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think that this happened because this project is the best rap album of all time, or do you think it's because Eminem has the support of white America behind him, and he could drop an entire project of him reading big words in the dictionary, and his fans would still call it a masterpiece? Eminem himself will tell you that it's the latter. From the song appropriately named White America from his 2002 album The Eminem Show, look at these eyes, baby blue, baby just like yourself. If they were brown, shady'd lose, shady sits on the shelf. But shady's cute, shady knew shady's dimples would help. Make lady swoon, baby look at my sales. Let's do the math, if I was black I would have sold half. I ain't have to graduate from Lincoln High School to know that. Eminem is not only the highest selling rapper of all time by a ridiculous margin, but he's also been nominated for Best Rap Album at the Grammys seven times, and he's won six of those times. So even when we're talking about industry ties and not commercial performance, white privilege is still king. And how could we discuss white privilege without bringing up the biggest disaster of a Grammy win ever? In 2014, the nominees for Best Rap Album were Drake's Nothing Was The Same, Jay-Z's Magna Carta Holy Grail, Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid Mad City, Kanye West's Yeezus, and Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's The Heist. Need I remind you who won that night? So with this section of the video, my point is this. It weirds me out just how much white people love supporting the token white guys of the rap community. I get the idea that you enjoy seeing somebody who might represent you in some way, but I think there's a line between representation and blindly supporting somebody because of the color of their skin. But more importantly, the point turns into this. When it comes to being extremely successful in hip hop, all that white privilege reeks of injustice, and any good-hearted person should hate to see that. Whether it's on the Billboard charts or on the Grammy stage during the presentation for Best Rap Album, Injustice Anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere.
On the legendary rapper Talib Kweli's podcast, People's Party, him and the underground rapper Murs were discussing the role of white rappers in hip hop. By the end of their discussion, Murs said something that I think is really fascinating. He made an analogy of white rappers and black rappers being like two different kinds of rocket ships. For a black rapper like Jay-Z, that rocket ship has a very smooth takeoff and it can travel pretty high in the sky. The real life translation for that is that Jay-Z isn't gonna have a problem being accepted by the hip hop community, and if he's one of the best, he can have plenty of commercial and critical success. But for a white rapper like Eminem, things are totally different. That rocket has more than a few problems getting off the ground. At first, it can barely move, but once it gets going, this rocket can go way further than the other rocket. Traditionally, being a white rapper and trying to gain acceptance in the rap community has been hard. People will make fun of you, they won't give you a chance, and so on. But once you get that acceptance and you're known as one of the best in the game, you're able to reach levels of success that most rappers would only dream of. While I think this makes a lot of sense, I just want to give two clarifications so that it totally matches my opinion. First, I want to make sure that we're on the same page that this doesn't really apply to the frat rap rappers from before. Because they only cater to white people, they're not seeking acceptance from the rap community, therefore they wouldn't have any problems at first. They'd start off strong like how Mac described it before, but because they're in this weird niche of hip-hop for white people, they'll never gain huge levels of success. And second, I need to make the point that this rocket ship analogy is becoming less and less true with every year and decade that passes. Because people like Eminem and LP did their time and proved themselves as rappers and they had their struggles early on, and also because rap is now the most popular genre in the country, that's why it's easier now more than ever to be a white person in rap. But still, after looking at that analogy, I want to go down a list of white people in rap and give my thoughts on why they made it, why they didn't, or why I think they'll always be in this weird spot, taking off a little bit, but never really finding acceptance. When I think of successful white people in rap who are well liked by fellow rappers and rap fans, I think there are two perfect choices and we'll talk about them last. But in the meantime, I'll try to get through all the other examples. First off, I'm not even really gonna mention the Beastie Boys because they were in the game so early, so I don't think that some of what I said here applies to them at all. Regardless, they were pretty well respected after they got their cosign from Run DMC, and they were very successful. Eminem is a weird case because after Dre introduced him, the rap game did love him for the first, like, five years of his career, but I think he just overstayed his welcome. He's clearly an all-time great, but later Lately it's just been boring shock value, and yet he's still doing very well because of what we mentioned before, so I think in general the rap community does not like him anymore. And also his style is so easy to make fun of, and this was one of the best parts of that article with Mac and Vince. With guys like Macklemore, Logic, and g Easy, I believe that they do love rap and they respect its history, but so much of their stuff is just so corny that it's hard to believe that they'll ever fully succeed without being the butt of of a joke. And also, two of them had their own weird situations that would make them lose street cred in this department, and that definitely doesn't help either. While Iggy Azalea had some big commercial success, it seemed like she was just catering more to white people. Action Bronson is fun, and he's super unapologetically himself, but he's somebody that's too weird to ever make it in mainstream rap. He may have some high-profile collabs every now and then, and I would certainly categorize him as a white guy that raps, not a white rapper, but his stuff is a bit more niche. Post Malone has made enough comments about not wanting to be known as a rapper, and then there was the stuff about him not respecting rap culture, so while he is insanely popular and reasonably well respected, I don't know if he really fits in with what we're talking about. Then in a similar vein, I'll throw Lil Xan and Lil Peep in the category of people that sort of sat on the fringes of what hip-hop could be, and a lot of people wouldn't even call them rappers. Guys like MGK and Yellow Wolf might as well be Mike Studd and Chris Webby to me, but they're just catering to a different demographic of white people. Lil Dicky and Riff Raff are memes, I'm not taking them seriously in all of this. 
I liked some Asher Roth stuff, but then he disappeared into oblivion after he stopped selling out. Anybody that I haven't mentioned probably was or is super underground and irrelevant to these discussions on mainstream success, or I just think they're clearly not worthy of being in the conversation. So my two big examples of guys that properly figured out how to simultaneously be white and a successful, well-respected rapper are LP and Mac Miller. They both fought their way into these positions. L was underground for most of his career and finally started making some big waves with Run The Jewels, and Mac transitioned from a frat rap rapper to making some of the most personal, introspective hip-hop albums I've ever heard. Sadly, Mac isn't with us anymore, but I'm gonna use the present tense here because I want to describe both of them at once. These guys are cool, they don't hide their whiteness, but they don't make it an integral part of their music either. They're likable enough and talented enough to reach a wide range of audiences while still being critically acclaimed, they take their music seriously while still letting their humor shine through, and in general, I think they have a better, more human understanding of the rap game than all of the other people that I mentioned. As we've discussed today, there are a lot of problems with white rappers. They can cater solely to white audiences, they don't understand the privilege that they have, but more than anything, they struggle with the idea of being themselves. In a community that has historically rejected them, they often try to change bits and pieces of who they are until they come up with this Frankenstein's monster of their former self. Instead of focusing on the music, too many outside factors come into play, and they can't find a proper balance between respect for hip-hop and respect for themselves. But luckily, this doesn't have to be the case with everyone. With certain white people that rap, they're being themselves, they love and appreciate the culture, and they're able to find success. In a genre that is becoming more and more popular, one that continues to change its sound over the years, and one where white people are being themselves and rapping because they love to rap, I think eventually we won't even be having these kinds of conversations anymore. It's an interesting prospect, and I'm very curious about what the hip-hop landscape will look like 20 or 30 years from now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Hey everybody, thank you for watching that video. I hope that the comment section can be civilized and have a good discussion with all of this. If you want to support the channel, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media at RenshawHS. You can buy my merch, support my Patreon, and thank you again. I'll see you soon.